Okay. Welcome everyone. I'm glad you're all able to join us today. This is one of our side sessions of the Decentralized Identity Foundations Hackathon, which is ongoing between now and December 1st. So we do have 30 more days of hacking. So if you have not registered or found a team, there's plenty of more time to get on board and to make a submission. Uh, so today we are joined by Mircha Nistor, who is from Veramo. He's co-founder of Veramo. We're very happy to have him here today. Um, as you may have heard, there was a recent donation of Veramo to the Decentralized Identity Foundation. So you'll see a lot more coming out of DIFF related to Veramo. And uh, so we're very happy to have this demo today. Uh, we also are encouraging participants in the hackathon, especially if you're new to decentralized identity, to get familiar with Veramo, um, get into this demo. Also, we're going to have another demo next week related to Veramo and Didcom. And that's going to be a very special, uh, special session because it will include Sam Curran, who will go through Didcom fundamentals in the beginning. And then we'll have Nick Reynolds from Veramo who will go through the Veramo Didcom package. So it's gonna be the perfect event. Uh, it's gonna be two hours long. So make sure you can block off your, uh, your calendar next week, uh, next Thursday, November 9th from nine to uh, 11 Pacific time. Uh, so with that, I am going to hand it over to Mircha to go ahead and take you through an introduction to Veramo. And if you guys have any questions along the way, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat. So go ahead, Mircha. Hey, folks. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, first of all, I hope you will excuse my uh, my voice uh, because I'm uh, currently experiencing a cold. But um, besides that, uh, let's uh, jump into some um, show and tell. That's so. Can uh, can anyone? Can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right, yes. so let's try a little bit of a slideshow here. Uh, is it still visible or am I? Okay. Yes, it's still visible. All right, so um, yeah, first of all, like what, what is this Veramo thing? It's, um, uh, yeah, we, we, we think of it as a, as a framework, uh, but it's also like a library or an API, it can be an ecosystem. Um, and it's it's been created mostly for decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials. Um, it can do much more than this, uh, but it's um, this this was its original purpose, let's say. So a little bit of where it it's coming from. Um, it 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 was initially conceived um, in inside of consensus mesh in 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 a project called Uport. Um, Uport was one of the early self-sovereign identity projects in the, in the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, and it originally it was dealing with key management and social recovery and, and things like that. Um, along the along that uh, path, um, we built uh, the Uport the proxy model at some point, which kind of like represented every uh, entity as a, as a smart contract on Ethereum. Um, some spin-offs from that are maybe uh, stuff like Gnosis Safe, uh, Argent Wallets, and and um, even meta transactions, which were like some some of the early explorations of of uh, the Uper project. Um, while we were doing that, the the did um, the decentralized identity uh, identifier uh, spec was being written, so um, we quickly jumped on board and created a um, started adopting this this technology, even if as as early um, as it was uh, before it was uh, complete. And we created this did uport um, uh, DID method representing these contracts. Um, but after uh, experimenting with it, um, we realized that it you know it didn't scale that much, um, mostly because people needed to create like transactions to interact with the, the to, to basically to create their uh, contracts. So that's when we created that ether um, as a as a means to scale uh, this this onboarding process uh, infinitely technically. Um, of course, along the way we um, experimented with a lot more DID methods like did NACL, which was a sort of like a proto did key, 
uh, Dead Newport, um, something that became Dead Tree, which is was used for a while by the Ceramic Network. Um, and of course, some of the stuff we use for Dead Ether got reused for Dead PKH. Um, so um, kind of um, explored all of these uh, identity models along the way. Um, of course, it's not just about identity models, it's, 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 it's how you use them. Uh, the Uport ecosystem was working with signed claims. Um, of course, uh, also, you know, um, the, the verifiable credential standard was being created. Uh, so we adopted that one instead of calling everything signed claims. We started calling things verifiable credentials and uh, started working with that spec. Um, we were working with uh, stuff like selective disclosure, of course, like a proto, uh, like a very simple uh, protocol, not um, also inspired by OAuth, but not as complex as the, the current day, like presentation exchange or OID uh, for VC um, and other kinds of verifiable data, like EIP 712 uh, signatures and uh, things like that. Um, all of these things were evolving while we were working with it. And we were working with it in like mostly a mobile app uh, at the time, uh, but this mobile app also needed to interact with websites. So uh, we created two, sta two stacks, essentially, one for backends, the Uport SDK, and one for uh, frontends, uh, Uport Connect. Um, these kind of evolved into present-day digitality, uh, which is, was also donated to Diff uh, a long time ago, and digitality VC and Div Resolver and all of that. All of these libraries came, came from this effort. But you might have noticed that it's essentially three different stacks. There's like a, a mobile stack, um, a backend stack, and a frontend stack. And um, all of these things um, were kind of difficult to work with, especially in this like very rapidly changing environment. So that's when we kind of like try to consolidate things into this DAF, like did agent framework was, call, uh, was called at the time, but it uh, got renamed to Veramo, which is the thing I'm talking about today. So yeah, working in three stacks meant that every time something changed, uh, changed in, in one of the specs, we needed to adapt three things. So that wasn't a good thing. So we wanted something that uh, allowed us to define protocols, define um, these uh, standards in, in, and their implementations in a way that could get reused in, in different places. Um, so we wanted something that uh, we could use in, in, in these environments that we were working with. So it, it meant that we needed something multi-platform uh, at the very least. We also realized that we cannot implement everything from scratch all the time. So we needed to be um, extensible. Um, we we needed to support this, the stuff that we are working on today, but also to be able to adopt other stuff that was being built uh, on the site or by someone else or um, things like that. And um, also, it's it's impossible to write every, uh, or maybe not impossible, but very hard to, to write and maintain all the implementations of everything you want. So we early on we we made the decision to to make things permissionless so that everything that uh, can you know uh, that, that gets written out there can be um, technically um, be adapted by a Veramo plugin or uh, the Veramo ecosystem in general. So with this philosophy in mind, we created this this framework, um, and what we have today is takes the form of a core library um, that um, acts as an orchestrator of plugins. And what you see on the board here is a bunch of uh, types of plugins that are um, available for Veramo. The, 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 the full blocks are things that are already um, in the Veramo repository. And these uh, like lighter colors are stuff that was built by other folks. And uh, the dashed ones are like things that are essentially planned for, um, but not yet available, uh, to my knowledge, at least. Um, sorry. But um, yeah, the, so the it, it kind of covers most of what you would need when working with verifiable data and, and DIDs, like key management, dead management, you know, credential issuance and verification, revocation as well. 
uh, some protocols for uh, messaging and um, storage uh, options. A lot of lot of options for storage, uh, mostly based on type ORM possibilities. So like a lot of SQL databases, but we have also some like key value storage or um, just a JSON blob that uh, lives in memory is also possible. Um, so um, and of course, it's it's not just. Veramo uh, built plugins. It's also a community plugin. So a lot of people from outside of the the uh, the team have have built plugins for Veramo and used it for their own purposes, like um, um, AWS hardware security module adapters instead of our own key management systems, or um, BLS signatures for Veramo, or data manager um, plugins for um, you know um, browser extensions. And and all sorts of things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm. You can interrupt anytime. Like if you have any kind of questions, just um, um, I'll just raise your voice <laughs> and ask. But uh, I'm just gonna continue with with uh, with this. So, how you would typically use this? Um, you have your client application and you can instantiate Veramo as a, as a, as a library, just like import it in, in your code. And this library, um, it gets configured with a bunch of plugins that, uh, that, uh, the agent orchestrates. And these plugins are the ones that actually implement the functionality that was on the earlier board. So, uh, and the way they do this is by, you know, uh, just expressing some, some methods that can be called either by the client application or by other uh, plugins. These methods can uh, emit events while they uh, you know, do their thing. And these events can be subscribed to by uh, plugins or by the client application as well. Like a, a special kind of plugin is the message handler, which can, can be triggered by external uh, events as well. And it, it generates messages that, you know, uh, restart this loop with with uh, events. This this framework itself is is very lightweight, so there is no initialization cost uh, or like very small initialization cost. Uh, so you can technically create these these agents as as um, as often as you want. The, the the word agent is sometimes loaded with you know like something heavy that needs to needs to live somewhere. But um, with Veramo, if you use the same configuration for uh, an agent like you, you can technically when you re-instantiate it it's 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 the same agent so you don't have to like keep some long running application um in in some some uh you know contain containerized ecosystem somewhere to get an agent you can just as well um, embed it in your uh, very small javascript app and this is technically how you would use it um uh, it's you you call this create agent um, method with a bunch of plugins that are each get their own configuration, and then you start calling the methods on on this agent. Uh, all these methods, like the in this case, like did manager get or create. This one is provided by the uh, sorry by the did manager uh, plugin, and this simple code here. Uh, yeah, I see a raised hand. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to point out there was a question in the chat. Somebody asked, "Can I use an agent to verify a credential?" Of course, and I'll I'll be showing that uh, very soon. So what what you see on screen right now is just a uh, you know creating an agent, um, creating a, a user uh, identifier, and then a credential about that uh, that user. Um, and th that's, this is not the only way to use it, um, actually. Uh, this is the main way, but um, it, it can also get expressed as a, an open API uh, endpoint. So all of those methods that these plugins expose, they can be these uh, uh, entries in the open API spec, uh, which you can call. And this means that technically you can create SDKs for other uh, uh, stacks that can interact with your agent, which in this case would have to live uh, in a server somewhere, but um, it's it's uh, possible to work with Veramo from from other stacks like this. 
And we also built this uh, command line application that is mostly for demo purposes, but you can also use it for production use cases or debugging as well. So um, I'll probably show this at um, at some point to uh, to show you how how things work and click together. All right, so let's try to explore some of the uh, the ways. Uh, it, it can be configured. So um, as I said, you, you'd you have your business logic, you you instantiate your, your um, Veramo agent with a bunch of plugins. You have somewhere in your business logic, you call some, some method, you know, it gets executed by a plugin and then maybe you listen to some events. All of these plugins, can they, can they have their own configs like, you know, like database connections and they can even reuse the same database if it's compatible or like, um kind of like share share fields with the existing user user data for example but it's um it's up to you how you configure it there's no like one recipe for for everyone um and of course since since uh, the open api connection is possible it also means that you can have sub subsets of of these methods exposed remotely like in this uh in this example, I have a, an agent that only has a key manager plugin, and that key manager key manager uses a hardware security module to, you know, do the do the crypto thing. Um, and then this agent uh, actually gets used as a key manager inside of another agent that is that lives in your application, and which for all the other plugins and for the application itself, um, it just looks like a local plugin. But uh, it's it's actually using the functionality from this remote agent, which also means that you can do the whole agent remotely if needed. So um, that's also possible, um, where the, the 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 adapter here just acts as a as a thin layer on top of this remote agent. And of course, I mentioned that uh, you can use it in other tech stacks, like you generate a, an SDK for like Kotlin, for example, from the open API spec that the agent generates. And you drop that in, in, in your Kotlin app and, and use it. And of course, uh, all the plugins, you know, it's up to you how you pick and choose. It's it it's all configurable based on the on the application that you're building. So you, you don't have to use everything that Veramo provides if you don't need it. Uh, like for example, if you if you just need uh, credential verification, you can use a DIMP resolver and the credential plugin. You don't have to use like data storage or identity manager or key manager. You just need these two. Um, and of course, other combinations are possible, but um, you, you can imagine that um, you you have a lot of options in, in how you configure um, and, and how you use Veramo. It, it's very adaptable to every uh, situation out there. And of course, we've seen people create special plugins for their own needs, like uh, you know even plugins that interact with the user interface of the application or you know like a sn a storage for uh, MetaMask snaps or uh, stuff for presentation exchange. Um, so it, it can be adapted. Uh, like you, you can use combinations of plugins either from, from, uh, from us or from other teams and just put it in, in your application as, uh, as needed. And I'm, I'm going to share a link to this presentation. Uh, so you, you can check out some of these links here. And also on the, on the Veramo repository, there's a, like a small list of projects that we know of. Of course, because it's permissionless, we, we don't know all the implementations out there and all the plugins that are out there and all the apps, but um, some of the people that work with Veramo told us about some stuff and we, we uh, took some notes. And you will find, um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna share some links like uh, the, the veramo.io is where you would go for documentation. Also the, the code base itself, um, which now lives in in, uh, in the decentralized identity GitHub. Um, it's uh, you you can use the like the test suits uh, for for sample code a, a lot of the time, and we are 
most of the time available on Discord. So just ask questions there as well. I see another raised hand. Yeah, I was just, um, do you have a, a copy of your slide deck, deck uh, available to drop in the chat? Because what I could do is I, I could also drop some of these links for people. Oh, of course. Uh, I'll just copy the link and drop it in the chat as soon as I find the, the chat button. All right. So I hope everyone can see it. And if not, I will find a way to drop it in <laughs> again. Yes, it is visible. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, also, there are some resources that I didn't mention in these slides. Um, we have a tool called Agent Explorer, uh, which allows you to uh, actually, let me see if I can um, just quickly load it up, allows you to uh, strap a UI on top of your agents so that you can get started with it or like start interacting with you with these agents so um here um you, you can run it locally but we also have like a hosted version of it uh, which you can use to connect to, to the, the agents you're running and the way it works is there's a, like a, a local agent that runs in the browser and you can also connect to other agents um from uh from from this panel right here and then you get all the like um, um you, you get some options of working with your identifiers or credentials and, and and things like that um there's a plugin template which um you can use to build your own plugins uh Veramo plugins are coming multiple shapes and sizes like there's the top level plugins that get expressed as as these like methods that i that I keep, I keep mentioning but you can also have like sub plugins that um get orchestrated by like by by these uh, smaller ones um by the by these top level plugins for example in the case of key manager uh you can have multiple key management systems that each cater to some particular technology or some particular um, crypto suit or something like that. And you can have multiple of these uh, working together in one agent. And this repo tries to cover most of the most of the basics um, of, of these things. So you can like if you if you want to implement some some particular aspect, uh, you can get started from here. Um, and uh, I also like wrote some like sample code, which I'll try to show in a minute or two, um, just to get you started in in like uh, if you're building a JavaScript application uh, with with Veramo. So, yeah, I don't know any questions so far. Uh, by the way, I didn't check the chat. I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment. Um, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I will then um, try to uh, share screen and show some other types of code. Let's see. So, uh, yeah. Actually, let me just share this desktop. All right. Can you... I don't know if that's visible. But... No, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So Um, can people see my IntelliJ window or I, I'm not exactly sure what I'm sharing because I have two monitors and I'm getting some weird issues from Zoom. Um, so I'm seeing, um, it says TS backend. All right. All right. All right. So, okay. Uh, which means that I can minimize it and just uh, try to show. Um, let's let's just try to work with the um, with the command line application a little bit. Uh, so, oh, sorry. All 
All right, so um, you can use this command line application by, you know, like npm install um, globally Ramos uh, CLI, uh, something like this. Like on my machine, it's already installed, so I'm not gonna do this. Uh, but then after you do that, you have this uh, Ramo command that you can just use in your CLI. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it, it shows some options of, of what you can do. And the way it works is there, it, it creates an agent inside of it. And uh, the agent itself is based on this configuration that I'm going to show in a sec. Um, all right. So... Um, it, it kind of looks like this, the, the configuration, it's a YAML file that describes all the plugins and all the, uh, options that they are using. So this one is uh, by default configured with, um, most of the bells and whistles that are present on the Veramo repository, uh, which should help a lot of folks get, get started with the basics. Um, I hope, and if not just, uh, raise an, raise an issue. So let's see some some things that you can do with it. Um, let's just create a, an identifier uh, first. So just when I do did create it, ask me like what uh, provider I want to use. So these are the ones that are installed in this agent. And I'm just going to create a did key, um, call it GG. And this is it. Uh, we have it now. And now, um, let me try to create a credential using this uh, did. Oh, by the way, so um, any command uh, has this dash H, which should help you navigate the, the, the options that are available. So um, let's just create one. So, okay, I'll choose a JWT credential. This is gonna be the issuer. Um, since this was meant for demo purposes, this the, the the credentials that I can create from here are kind of simple. This one is is just going to be um, like a profile credential with a name, and uh, this is it. This is the 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 credential. It asked me a bunch of things that went into the credential subject, and that's it. In the case of JWT credentials, the the actual Credential is, is all embedded in this uh, JWT uh, property from here. Um, in other types of credentials, have like you you have to use the whole thing. But in, for JWTs, you can use the just the just this bit as well. So let's um, let's try to verify it. Uh, actually, I forgot if I need to provide. Oh yeah, so as a raw credential, just paste the JSON uh, the JWT. Sorry. And yeah, credential was verified successfully. And what actually happened was it looked at this, it decoded it as a as a you know JWT. It looked at the issuer, it took the issuer and resolved that issuer did document, and then checked the signature against that did document, um, and uh, at the same time checked all the all the dates that are in the credential. In the, in this case, it's just like issuance date. Um, so the 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 it it checked that today is after the issuance date. If we had an exp expiration date, it would have checked that as well. And also, like if it was using a credential status for credential revocation, it would have verified that as well. Um, so the the simple answer is yay, it's verified. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, one other thing that can be done is um, to explore the local database uh, of this uh, agent. So I I created this GG identifier earlier and um, just a credential by it. So you can see this here. I don't really have any presentations or messages yet, but um, you can all also check those out if you uh, if you're working with it. Uh, technically, the, the the configuration that was that is used to create this agent can also be used in a in a JavaScript application to instantiate essentially the same agent, but in a like a programmatic context. Um, and let's see what else. Oh yeah, so um, I can use this 
configuration to also start uh, the agent as a server, um, which means that I can then interact with it uh, from um, using Open API. And uh, let, let me just try to find a better UI for it. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to copy this API docs link and to a browser and all right. So I'm now connected to that agent that was, um, uh, uh, sorry, can you see my browser window? Yes, we can see. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I'm not connect. I'm now connected to this agent that I'm hosting here. So I should have technically all the all the same options that I did before. Uh, these are the methods that directly the methods that are available on the on that agent. So let's see if I do um, the manager find maybe. Oh yeah, this is it. So let's try it out. Uh, if I don't provide any options here, it's just gonna find every did that it manages. So let's see. Oh yeah, um, I first have to like authorize this UI to work with that remote agent. By default, these configs come come with a like a bearer token uh, API kind of API token kind of like uh, authorization, um, and the default one is test one to three. So don't forget to change this uh, or update the the whole authorization mechanism as well. Um, it's a very simple kind of like, um, you know, one token controls everything uh, model here, but you can customize it to your needs uh, if you want to uh, do something else. So in this case, uh, let's try the method again. And yeah, so I got this response with the did uh, that I created earlier. And also, like when I started the server, uh, there's like a default functionality to create a, another uh, default did, and um, that one is a did web, but but it's just like um, uh, like a local hosting. So uh, ignore it for now. So I see the same data that I had before, and um, in my command line application, and I can also do the same things with it, like. Uh, let's see if I can copy the state. Um, let's try to create a credential from this interface. Uh, so create, ah, sorry. I don't see. I should be seeing a create verifiable credential somewhere. Oh yeah, um, excuse the demo words. So let's try it out. So in this case, I'm I'm just gonna act as the the issuer. Um, but I'm using the did that I created earlier. Um, it's gonna be a self signed credential that is just gonna be like claiming the name. Um, I don't care about the type or context, uh, mostly because a lot of this stuff is going to get filled in by the, the framework itself, if it knows how to, and otherwise it will throw an error. And I'm going to be using a JWT proof format, so the context doesn't really matter. I don't have to define that name. Uh, but here, um, let's just try it. All right. All right, so we got a credential with uh, claiming that the name is Gigi. Let's do something else so that we can tell it apart from, from the other stuff. Uh, so uh, all right, so let's see. Everything is uh, awesome. All right, so now I can like work with this whole credential, but as I mentioned earlier for JWT, mostly this part is the, the important part. So let's try to verify this one. All uh, right, verify credential. All right, so I can, like, as I said, I can paste the whole thing here, or I can just use the, the string itself. 
this is JSON, so I sh I need to quote it. Everything else, I, I don't know exactly why these things appear. Uh, it's probably a bug that I discovered just now, but uh, just ignore everything else. So, all right, and we have a result, sorry. Um, verified true, and you get a lot more details about the verification, like the credential itself, who signed it, uh, the verification method that was used, um, all of that. But most of the times, what you care about is this uh, property. All the verifications have this. The, the rest of the, the payload can, can change depending on the credential type. All right, so um, maybe let's, uh, yeah, just questions so far? Uh, there was one question in the chat. I'm not sure if it was answered uh, okay. from Gary. What are the, well, the VCs issuer is always wrapped into JSON? Is that compliant with the VC, uh, W3C data model? Am I missing something? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. So when when I create a credential, let's see. Um, you, you mean the fact that this is JSON? Yeah, the issuer itself, yes. Uh, like okay. a JSON. Yeah. I don't so know yeah, it, it is compliant. You can actually provide multiple issuer properties here. Um, but um, what Veramo cares about is the issuer ID that it uses um, as the... So, so the way it works when you, when you call this method is that the, the credential plugin looks at this ID property and, say, and then asks the, the key manager uh, plugin, hey, uh, sorry, the did manager plugin, hey, do we manage this DID? And if so, can I use it to sign stuff? And then with the reply that it gets from the did manager plugin, it gets a list of key IDs that can be used. And then it uses one of those keys to sign the credential. Um, and this can also be specified as, you know, like without the ID property, I think. Let me just try it. Uh, all right. So yeah, uh, let's let's just try it like this. Yeah, so it, it worked like this as well. Actually, let me try some other property. So yeah, I, I got the, I was able to create the credential with the, the issuer specified just as a as a string. So you can work with both the but when you when you when you when you work with an object, you have to specify the the issuer as a as the ID property. When I did work, that's, when you work with it as a as an object instead of just a string, you have to you uh, to, to specify the, the issuer ah. ID as the as the ID property of the issuer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can also add like other stuff here. Um, So this should technically also work. Yeah, so I got the, you know, the, this credential also has other stuff in the issuer property. Okay, yeah, so, uh, yeah thanks for this. But uh, uh, my my concern, I didn't find the syntax uh, before in, uh, in um, VC data model version two or one. So yeah, that's what, that's what I was wondering. That, uh, yeah, we can do this. I mean, technically in Verom, yeah, we can do, but uh, overall is that uh, okay. correct? syntax or not. Actually, you brought up a, an important point. Uh, the, the current credential plugin implements the, the uh, V1 data model. It doesn't, we haven't adapted it to V2 yet. So uh, if, you, if it's important for you to work with the V2 data model, that's not available yet, I'm sorry. OK. But I, I don't think the, the V2 data model is, is complete yet. So um, we'll have to wait a bit. Okay, yeah, thanks. All right, um, like all of the credentials that I created earlier, let's see. Um, if I do like a Verum Explorer, um, I should see the same, uh, oh, sorry, the same credentials, oh, sorry. 
I know, I, I know what happened. So the, the credentials that I was uh, creating, they were just ephemeral, uh, living just in, um, in memory. Uh, if I wanted to save them, I should have called the, um, the, the save uh, method. But in any case, let's um, let's maybe move to some other types of code. So uh, let's see. Just a sec. All right. So this is the the, the sample code that I linked to in the presentation as well. So. What happens here is, um, you know, the, the the agent gets set up. Uh, I see something in the chat. Just a sec. You, you can ignore. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I was confirming. Yes, uh, the syntax is already there in uh, v one or v two. Yeah. So. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, so what happens here is I have this agent that uh, is configured in another file that I'll, I'll be showing, and I'm just using it to you know create an issuer. Uh, in this case, I'm also creating a subject DID, like a different one, and just creating a credential and verifying it. And normally, these things would happen in different uh, applications, like. The, the issuer is one application that issues the credentials to, and then credentials get like sent somehow to a holder that holds them in their identity wallet. And the holder itself is another application, the, the, like the, the identity wallet. Then the holder wants to do something with that credential and they show it or they present it uh, in, in, you know, like a, by creating a verifiable presentation, which is also available uh, on the agent. And that gets to a verifier, which verifies it. But in this case, it's like all simplified into one, one file. But uh, I hope you you get the picture. Um, and uh, okay, so I promised I would look at this. So this is like the a pr fairly exhaustive list of plugins that can be used from the Veramo repository itself. Um, so this is mostly what the, the command line application agent looks like as well. It has a bunch of, um, sorry, a bunch of, uh, you know, like did providers in the did manager, uh, some like message and handlers, uh, data storage options. In this case, using an SQLite database, um, you know, it, it can do didcom. There's a, a credential plugin for issuance and verifications. Um, did discovery? This is something that I'm I'm not going to go into because it's not very that uh, uh, significant for this. Um, selective disclosure. This is like the the tiny um, protocol that that uh, we built in the Uport days, which was re-implemented for Varamo. So um, just as a FYI, FYI, if you're using this, this is not just like a generally accepted standard. It's just something that kind of like um, remained in the repository until now. But at some point, this will probably disappear or adapt to become like presentation exchange or something more um, like generally agreed upon. Um, everything else though is is uh, mostly standards based. And um, yeah, I've, I've, as I said, like when you, um, when you when you use these plugins, they they talk to each other. So that's one of the benefits of using this framework. Like when you call create verifiable credential, you know it it checks the issuer ID and links to other uh, plugins that manage this DID and then the keys that uh, the the DID is assigned uh, is is using, and also for verification, you know the the credential. Um, coming in needs to be verified in multiple ways. So multiple plugins can can be uh, used for that. Uh, most of the time, the did resolver is the most important one, like the, the to resolve the issuer did and check the signature of the credential against the keys of, of it. Um, so they kind of like wire up together to provide this fairly simple functionality. Um, 
it's as simple as can be in my opinion based on the like w3c um specs um but of course like if you if you know of ways to simplify things i'm like all ears and since veramo is now in in uh, in dif you know it should be more of a collaborative effort uh, instead of just one team uh, driving everything and um yeah let me just show some other one so this code here looks mostly the same um it it's also creating an agent it's also like uh, creating a did and, and the credential and then uh, verifying the credential um but the difference between these two is that this agent is actually using um just some plugins locally and everything else is remote so um it's just using the resolver and the credential plugin for verification locally and everything else that it needs to create credentials and DIDs um, is coming from, from a remote agent. So it's actually using the, the setup from the, the other one, which needs to be expressed as a server. Um, and then things become much simpler in terms of setup. But of course, uh, you, you now have like two machines to deal with and um, that's uh, that can create other complications, but in in some situations it it it's it simplifies things a lot as you 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 get some benefits of some machines that are are not available on like on the edge or, or something like that. So um, sometimes this kind of setup can also be helpful. And yeah, you can check out this code to um, yeah to to see how things are wired up together. And and also as a like template TypeScript project, I I hear some folks have some difficulty setting things up. So this maybe serves as a as a template project for for that as well. Okay, um, I think we're coming up close to the time. Uh, so I don't really have any like uh, other things uh, prepared, but I'm open to questions or like if you come up with an idea of like something to do on the spot, I can try to do it in, in the code. Any other questions from anyone? Gary, was your question answered earlier? Oh, I see a question from Phil. So- um... Did he say yes? Oh, I'm sorry, Gary, was that a yes? No, no, it wasn't. Um... Your demo code refers to the at next. I'm assuming that means it's like beyond latest, like like pushing cutting edge, whatever. Yeah. Uh, by default, I think. Uh, I, I actually not by default. Uh, just this repository. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's using the next versions of Veramo, um, which means so the um, the the it, it refers to the the release process that we use. Um, so we we have this latest version, which is built from the main branch, uh, and it's supposed to represent the official releases. And then we like all the stuff that we bring into the next version, we we push it into the next branch, which um, periodically gets merged back into main. Uh, on the from the next branch, every commit gets a, uh, its own release, and that's it's all available at um, as a at next uh, this tag on on npmgs. So you can you can see the 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 upcoming changes as a as a preview releases. Um, oh, for this for this demo, you can use um, the the latest as well. Uh, there's no significant change um, relevant to this demo. Uh, okay, so any performance testing or testing of scale. This is kind of hard to answer, uh, mostly because um, the the way it's used in in production it depends a lot on the use case. Like, um, for example, um, you can use it with the SQLite database or a Postgres database or uh, MongoDB or something like that, and that might be your bottleneck. Or you can use it with uh, just a JSON blob that lives in memory to store all all, all your data. And you know you, you can imagine there's going to be a, a completely different uh, performance uh, characteristic between these two types of deployments, and there there are lots of other things that you need you might need to consider like um, 
what types of DIDs are you using? Um, like uh, how how long do they take to propagate when you when you update, or uh, how long does it take to resolve a DID? What kind of like tech stacks do you interact with when you do that? Uh, because not all DID methods are the same, so all of that uh, kind of um, impacts the 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 performance characteristics a lot more than Veramo itself. Um, Veramo itself, as I said, is a very small uh, library. Um, the the core, um, everything else is plugin based. So depending on the types of plugins that you use, you will you will see different options. Um, we we do have we know we do know of teams that use Veramo at scale. Um, and the types of things that they complain about is not Veramo itself. Is is the the like issues related to particular DID methods or uh, when they need to like. For example, in, in, in DIDCOM, you need to resolve the recipient did uh, and sometimes the sender did before you can um, know exactly which keys you, you are using to send messages. And this resolution step, for example, causes sometimes the, the, the DIDCOM step to, to appear slow, for example. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, like um, maybe my rambling has uh, answered your question a little bit but um if not then please follow up uh can we generate qr codes with varamo um i think that was at some point part of the command line application varamo itself doesn't have this qr code functionality but i'm i'm sure there's like a, an npm package out there that can be strapped upon a, an application to, to provide this. All right. Um, if there's nothing more then, um, we can either cut it short or I can try to make two agents talk to each other. <laughs> uh, why don't we um, ask the room, is, that, is anybody interested in seeing uh, one more short demo? Or we could oh, also uh, move over to Discord. People have additional questions. Um, we created a Veramo channel in our Discord server where everyone could go and ask Varamo specific questions. Um, let me go ahead and grab the um, the link there for people. Um, give me a second. Okay, so there's the the link to the Varamo channel in the Hackathon Discord. But of, of course, you could also go directly to uh, Varamo's Discord Discord channel as well. Um, but I mean, that's a good place to also put in resources and ask questions so that other hackathon participants could see it as well. Okay, yeah, definitely. I don't see any other questions. Uh, let me see. So Amarachi, um, who's a community manager at Bramo, she put in here the Bramo community on Discord. So you'll see that link there as well. Thanks. Thank you, Amarachi. Okay, and also um, just to let people know, we do have an upcoming session that's starting in five minutes on on uh, Trinsic and the BBS signature scheme. If you want to hop on that as well, um, let me grab the uh, the link there. If you do want to uh, join us, um, I may just stop that. Um, okay, there you go. Um, so yeah, so if you want to join right after that, um, come on in and keep on, keep on track of on top of our um, communications and discord as well as I'm going to be putting out announcements uh, there about the hackathon. So with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Mircha, for this demo. And of course, Mircha and others are around if anyone has any uh, further questions. And I hope to see you all in the next session. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. For the rest of your day. Have fun in the hackathon. Thank you.